Hi, this is a video for AOPRNGVUA2. Ain't anybody else interested? That individual requested to know about my ground station, so I'm going to show you. I don't consider it a true ground station, it's really just a video receiver and a carrying box, but I'll show it to you anyways. What I like to do when I go out flying is have all my stuff in a couple cases so I can walk somewhere, maybe a distance away from my car or whatever, fly for a while, and have everything fairly self-contained. So here's what I bring. This is my radio box. This is a Plano... Is it a Plano? Plano Protector Series. Right on. This is a handgun carrying case, basically. So it comes with foam. I picked this up, I think, at like a Gander Mountain or a Fleet Farm, something like that. Any place that sells guns is probably going to have something similar. So I've got my transmitter in here. I've got my FPV goggles, a couple batteries for the FPV goggles, an assortment of batteries. Um, just for my various quads, you can see a few sizes here. Got a few others charging right now. Hoping to go out flying a little bit later. That's that. Pretty basic. This one came with this uh, foam. It's like a pick and pluck. These are kind of like semi-cut and they're real easy to just pick out and make little compartments for your items. And I feel like it's pretty safe in there. Nothing really shakes around, so that's that. This is my pseudo ground station. This is just kind of a cheap metal briefcase. I think I got it on Amazon. I'll put links for all of this stuff in the description so you can look it up if you want. But it's uh, 18 by 12 by 6, roughly. All kinds of boxes like this out there. This is similar. It came with some things like the pick and pluck foam and whatnot. So in here, I've got my Vortex 285. The foam here is just right out of the package that the Vortex uh, came in. It's kind of glued to the bottom. I've got a bunch of spare, various spare propellers. I've got a small 12 volt charger. You know, if I want to charge something off my car, or you can actually use, say, like a, you know, maybe you have a big 4S battery, something like that, and you can charge a number of your smaller quad batteries off of it with this. These are just some bins. I got some extra parts, propeller adapters, nuts. You kind of lose those occasionally. They'll spin off when you crash. Some more extra parts, some bull nose, like uh, T-prop holders screws, uh, you know, the little damping bulbs, whatever you call those. I've got just, I pretty much used this case for the Vortex, so I got all my Vortex spare parts there. These are video cables for my, for my goggle hookup. I'll show you that in a second. In here, I've got some different antennas. You can see, um, I got the patch antenna that gives you kind of the 45 degree angle uh, beam of reception. I've got some of these mad mushrooms. I really like these. They're kind of expensive but I honestly think I've had better luck with them than all the other cheap ones. So there's your review on that. <laughs> uh, that's about it. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Got some adapters for the radio cords in there. Uh, so that's kind of what I bring with me. Quad is in here. Let's see, we got that. So let's move up. Here we go. So I put this stuff in here with Velcro. This is my receiver. Obviously I have the receiver in the goggles but the performance on that is spotty, especially if you like to fly through anything somewhat dense, which I do. 
So this is a diversity receiver. FR632. Uh, I can't think of the brand on Boss Cam, I think. Got this off of Banggood. Again, in the description, I'll put that. So I got two antennas. You hook two antennas up, antenna A, antenna B. Lots of times I'll put like, you know, an Omni antenna or like the Mad Mushroom clover leaf on one and I'll put a directional antenna on the other. So if I'm flying that way, I'll put the direction antenna on, point it that way and I'll put the Mad Mushroom so I can still fly, you know, around the backside a decent distance. And then just the nature of having two antennas separated, if you have some obstruction blocking one, then maybe the other one has good reception. And this just automatically switches to whatever antenna has the best reception at that moment, and it's completely seamless. You can't see it at all, but it takes out a lot of noise that you get with a single receiver. So that's that. Uh, I got some Velcro I put uh, on the side here, so I can just stick that there. Uh, I also, uh, like I was showing you in the boxes, I've got some cables here, so I can, uh, you know, I can have this over here and have put antenna on a cable and stretch it five feet over there and get a little bit more separation. So that's nice for a more robust connection uh, with your video signal as well. This is just a receiver I used to use. It's just a single receiver and I just keep it in here in case I have a problem with that one and I'm out in the field and I just want to be able to fly and not have to go back and fix something. So video cords on the receiver are routed up around here. This is a video amplifier so the video signal goes in here. I have a couple outputs. Um, I can't see there's four channels on here. I'm using two, three, and four. So one channel goes out to my monitor so I can fly by this or if somebody's with me and they want to watch, I can plug my goggles in to one of these channels and then uh, this is a DVR here. Um, and then I've got a little remote for the DVR so when I'm ready to fly I just bam hit record when I'm done, bam, stop, I can go back and watch. Definitely helpful when you crash and you aren't sure where. If you're recording, you can go back and watch and kind of uh, recreate it. Black box type of thing. So that's about it. This is what I go out with. It's kind of light, but uh, usually I can fly for a couple hours. Self-contained, it's pretty nice. So there you go. Thanks for watching.